Did you know, if you use Kunkka's Torrent on a neutral camp at just the right time, you can actually stack the camp? This is because the spawn boxes for the neutral camps are more than just the flat rectangle you see when holding alt. They have three dimensions. And when Torrent lifts the creeps up, it can bring them above and outside of the spawn box, allowing new creeps to spawn as if the camp were empty. But not all camps have the same height for their spawn box. If we go into Hammer, a mapping tool for Valve's engines, I think people often use this to make custom games, we can see the spawn boxes for neutral camps. And here you can see that spawn box sizes can differ. This spawn box for the large camp on the Dire Triangle is much higher than the ancient camp next to it. And if we look around more, we can see lots of differences in heights between all of the camps. We can even see a box around the shops, which is the range for being able to buy items from them. So if you're tossed in a shop, you'll be thrown up and out of range of it. This is just one of, actually not many, examples of the Z-axis having any significant relevance. But as someone who is intrigued by these small nuances in the game that I love, I thought it would be fun to explore the under-documented mechanics of the Z-axis in Dota 2. The Z-axis is interesting because it doesn't work in a consistent way for apparently similar interactions. For example, if Tiny tosses a unit, Tiny and anyone else can freely move under the tossed unit. If a unit is Yule's, you might think it works the same way, but it doesn't. You'll be blocked by the Yule's unit if you try to move in their direction, as if they were still on the ground. And note that when I say you'll be blocked by them, here I'm making use of the directional move hotkey, which moves your hero in a direction without the use of pathfinding, meaning it'll stop you if something's in your way instead of the game trying to find a way around. So why does a game work like this? Why do these two seemingly similar interactions have this difference? Well, as stated before, the mechanics surrounding the Z-axis are not very documented, so it's hard to confidently give cold hard facts. But it does seem that a lot of it has to do with the engine Dota runs on and how certain things are built with it. One comma I found on Reddit had a pretty good explanation. The gist is that units have a hitbox and a block box. The block box is what it sounds like. The box around a unit that's used to detect collisions with other entities. This is what's used for body blocking and blocking neutral camps. The hitbox is the box that's used to detect attacks and spells like Marana's Arrow or Pudge's Hook. The block box is able to move vertically on the Z-axis, while the hitbox cannot. This is why you can stack camps with Kunkka's Torrent and walk directly underneath a tossed unit. The box that would otherwise block you from walking or the neutral camp from spawning is being lifted into the air, preventing any interference with anything below. This also works with Lion's Earth Spike. This is why you're able to continue attacking a tossed unit instead of having to wait for them to land, because their hitbox, which again does not move up the Z-axis, is still basically on the ground. That being said, if an attack or spell has a projectile, meaning it has a travel time, that travel time will account for the height of the unit it's going for, because they always shoot towards the center of the unit. Although these projectiles have to travel for longer, they still have the same range constraints as if the unit were on the ground. So let's say hypothetically, Magic Missile had 100 range, and the tossed unit was thrown 1000 range up and away. Venge can still use Magic Missile on the tossed unit because the tossed unit's hitbox is still on the ground, and within the hypothetical 100 range. Also why you can hit a tossed unit with an AoE spell like Earth Spike, or with Marana's Arrow. How does the Z-axis affect uphill mischance? Well, it's actually pretty simple. 25% of range attacks miss if the attacking unit is at a lower terrain level as the target. The unit is considered to be on a higher elevated terrain when it is no longer visible to the player due to terrain. So if unit A and unit B are on the same terrain level and unit B's Z position is increased by some spell, unit B is technically still on the same terrain level, so there are no uphill misses. This is very apparent based on the description we just read because if a unit is lifted by a spell, they're still visible. Whereas if unit B moves up these stairs, unit A cannot see them anymore unless they somehow had vision like with a ward. So the uphill mischance will start to apply. When an ability moves a unit upwards, changing its Z position, this is called upward movement. There are a number of abilities that can affect a unit's Z position, like the ones we've mentioned that are visually very obvious. Toss, Torrent, Yules, and some abilities that aren't as obvious, like Batrider's Flame Break and Ursa's Earthshock, lifting a unit 183 units up respectively. I don't want to bore you by going through each ability and figuring out all that can be used to stack camps like Torrent. Just know that if an ability raises a unit's Z position by a good amount, it'll probably stack the camp. But remember, not all neutral camp spawn boxes are the same size, so not every spell will work on every camp. Now let's go over some mechanics and interactions with the Z-axis that I think are pretty interesting. And if you know of any that I don't mention, be sure to let all of us know in the comments below. If Cold Feet is used on you, you need to move 715 units to break it. This can be achieved by moving 715 units up the Z-axis as well. 
If Dream Coil is used on you and you move close to the point where it would snap, then you're lifted high enough by something like a Yule Scepter, the coil will snap while you're in the air because being lifted up raises the distance between you and the cast location of coil. Despite the ability sound effect, a unit affected by rupture will not take damage from their Z position being changed by abilities. The increased distance impetus seems to travel when targeting a unit in the air does not increase the damage, it's the same as if they were on the ground. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this topic is a bit of a mystery as a lot of the interactions and mechanics relating to the Z-axis aren't properly documented, as far as I could see, and a lot of the specifics come from a deeper understanding of the game's engine that I don't fully have a grasp on yet. So if you have any additional notes, questions, or corrections on anything I said, be sure to drop a comment and let's talk about it so we can all learn and grow. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I hope you learned something new with me.